guess what? It is DIY dupe day for fall here at Whiskey and What. And this is one of my favorite series because I love showing you guys how you can take inspiration from high-end stores and DIY items to get that high-end look without having to buy them and spend a crazy amount of money. So come along today. I've got a ton of new, exciting fall DIYs that you're definitely going to want to recreate for your own home. You're watching Whiskey and Wet. My name is Whitney, and I want to give a huge thank you to Quince for sponsoring today's video. Also, a huge thank you to my craft buddies who are back each and every week to DIY along with me. If you want to join us, just hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future video. First up, let's talk about these handcrafted pumpkin candle holders. I love the look of them, but obviously not for the price. But I wasn't sure how I was going to dupe it until I walked through Michael's and saw these. They were on sale, plus I had rewards, so I was able to get both of them for 8 bucks which I was so happy about, but here are the prices in the corner if you have to buy them regular price, still way cheaper than Pottery Barn. I started by taking a small screwdriver and detaching the candles just because when I spray painted like this, I didn't want to have an issue. I started with rustic orange and it was just not my vibe, so then I decided to do black. I like the blacks, it looked like the inspiration and you could just leave it like that, but I wanted it to be a little bit warmer for fall. So I decided to grab some rub and buff that I already had. This is antique gold and I applied it on the entire thing for both of my pumpkins. I think it really helped bring out that industrial look. It also helped them pop. The shape wasn't as defined when it was black, but this, oh my gosh, I think it turned out so good. I love the rub and buff effect and I always forget about it until I just randomly remember it and I'm so glad that I put it on these pumpkins. So you could do a gold version, you could do an orange version, you can style them like this, you could add florals. I think this will be really pretty for a Thanksgiving tablescape. So many different options. If I bought the set of two from Pottery Barn, they'd be $208, but mine I made for 20 bucks. That's a 90% savings. I have fallen in love with these oversized seasonal prints, but oh my gosh, 150 bucks, so crazy. So what I did is I decided to get some art from Etsy and print out 20 by 30 inch posters. So I got two of them. Then to make them really look like someone painted them instead of just getting them printed at Walgreens or Kinko's or whatever, I added some matte Mod Podge. I saw this trick a couple months ago on TikTok and I've been kind of saving it in my back pocket until I had a project for it and this is it. You're going to start with your first coat, cover the entire thing, let it dry, and then you're going to go back in no matter what your design is. I'm doing pumpkins, I'm doing ghosts, you could do this honestly for anything. You're going to go over the top and really accentuate the curves and the details of what your painting is about. So I'm going over the trees with stippling, I'm going over the curves of the pumpkins, and you want to make sure you are a little more heavy handed the second time around. It's going to dry clear, start white, and it's going to give a beautiful, beautiful texture. Now, while that is drying, I went out to the garage and grabbed some scrap one by two by eight. These are about three bucks a piece. You can get them cheaper if you buy the furring strips, but I like the one by twos because they have square corners. I'm going to measure 30 inches and cut a 45 degree angle. I'm doing all of this on my miter box to show you that you don't need big tools for this project. Once you've got a 45 degree angle cut at 30 inches, you're going to go to the other end and cut the other angle. Now the key here is you want to make sure that from long point to long point is 30 inches and you're going to want two of those pieces. Then you're going to have a 45 degree end. You're going to go to the other end and measure 20 inches. So in total, you're going to have two 30 inch and two 20 inch per picture. And you are going to only be left with a little bit of waste from that one by eight, which I love. Then when you line them up on Dollar Tree poster board, which is what we're going to mount them on, the 20 by 30 fits perfect. You have a beautiful square corner frame. Then all you have to do to customize is sand down those rough edges and then stain or paint whatever vibe you want. I end up doing English chestnut on these. It's not one of my top use stains, but I do like the reddish orangey color, especially to go with the prints that I chose. Now, once your images are dry, you're gonna use some double-sided tape and attach them to the foam board. You don't need a ton of tape. This is just to hold them in place while you're going to hook your frame on. I'm gonna flip it over once I have everything kind of where I want it, line up one of my long sides and staple it down. Then I'm going to add both of my sides as well as my top, make sure everything is lined up in the corners. And then I'm going to just do a quick little staple on all the different sides, just so everything stays put. I can make sure it's where I want it. And then I'm going to continue on the outside. Now on each corner, I am going to do one of these corner fastener staples. So across, and that is going to grab both sides and keep your frame together. 
Now at this point, if you are going to lean it up, you are done. If you want to hang it on the wall, you can quickly add a little hanger to the back. I've done that on some of mine. It's light enough that it is great to hang on the wall. I have to pat myself on the back because when my mom first saw these when I was getting the stage shots, she asked me if I painted it and like, I am not a painter. I do not have that skill. But with the texture and everything, I was like, okay, I'm patting myself on the back. I think this is a pretty good do. As a reminder, theirs was $148 for the same size. I made a dupe for $25, 83% off. Love the look of texture and stone in my fall decor, but not for that price again. So we're going to dupe this stone look with these paper mache pumpkins I found at Joanne. You can get paper mache pumpkins, Hobby Lobby, online, other places, but this was the cheapest price I found at the time. So I got two sizes of those as well as one of these Dollar Tree pumpkins. I just got the flat one and it was already in blue, so I knew I was going to make it over. First thing I needed to do was get rid of the stem and the leaves on my kind of squattier pumpkin. And then I'm going to mix a concoction of white paint, a little bit of brown paint, and baking soda. Now, if you have a color that you already have on hand that you want to use, then you don't have to mix it up. I just didn't have the kind of taupey sandstone color that I wanted. So I made that first, added baking soda, and you want it to be kind of the consistency of like wet sand. You just, the thicker the better. You want it to be thick to give you that texture. You're going to paint two coats onto those. And when the second coat is still wet, as you can see here, I'm going to use some just Folgers coffee. This is my crafting container of coffee grounds, so I'm not sticking painted fingers in the coffee that we use each morning, so just FYI, in case anybody was going to holler at me for that. And I'm just rubbing it in. The goal here is to get it to look like it is uneven and it has the stone flex. And I also like using the fresh coffee because then you know there's not moisture in it already, which is helpful for longevity, especially when you're putting it on paper mache. I used my paintbrush to cover up some of it so there weren't a lot of black flecks. They were more like in the stone look. And then I thought it needed a little bit of dimension. So I went through with some antique wax by Waverly. And you can also use brown paint for this. But I'm mixing a little bit of that, a little bit of that mixture that I painted the pumpkins with. And that is just giving the depth and the look of the stone. I am so thrilled with how these turned out. I think they look so real. This was another one I was able to ask my mom when she walked in. I was like, does that look like stone? And she picked it up and it was nice and light, which is great when I have a little one in my house in case he picks these up, drops it. It's not going to be a big deal. And they just, they look so real. It's one of those things that when you do it, you're like, I hope this turned out. And I'm really glad this one did. So if I were to get a three pack of these from Pottery Barn to be 128, I made them for 20 bucks. That's 84% off. As I comb all of these sites for the projects for these types of videos, I can't help but think, seriously, where do these prices even come from? Well, lately I do that with everything from the grocery store to home decor and fashion. And I am always on the hunt to make sure that those dollars that I'm spending are going to get me more value. That is why I am really liking Quince. They're all about delivering top-notch quality without the crazy markup. The main thing that caught my eye about Quince is to make their products, they partner direct with factories that are doing responsible, ethical, and safe manufacturing, which is a huge win in my book. Quince believes that quality should never be a luxury, and that covers so many different categories from women's staples, like their 100% cashmere sweaters, which I've been eyeing, plus men's, baby, kids, even maternity wear, all starting at just $30. They also have high quality home decor, beautiful jewelry, and travel essentials. Seriously, something for everyone. I am loving this organic cotton blazer that I have on. This is the camel color and it's not maternity, so I can use it now and well past when the baby is here. What I also love is that it is similar to a J. Crew option that is nearly $160, but this one is under $70. I was on the hunt for a maternity dress and I found this gem. I love that it's black and classic. It is nice and comfy over the bump. I am also eyeing their baby section on the website, obviously. I've been searching for a hard sided suitcase under $300 that I could carry on. And this one from Quince is great. It has 360 degree spinner wheels and high quality zippers with a TSA lock. And honestly, deep deals like this usually raise a red flag for me, but everything I've received so far from Quince has been awesome. Upgrade your closet with Quince. Head to quince.com slash whiskey wit to get free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. Another awesome thing about Quince.
Last year I made a Mickey pumpkin luminary and this year we are going to make a Mickey pumpkin candy dish, a dupe of the Pottery Barn Kids version they're selling for $79. I grabbed one of these craft pumpkins from Joann's for $11.99, get them wherever you can find them. I just grabbed orange so I wouldn't have to paint it and I used a kitchen knife to hollow out the top so it was a bowl. Then I'm taking some of that antique wax we used for the stone pumpkins and I'm applying it into the grooves and then letting it sit for a couple seconds and then I'm wiping it in with a tissue. That is just going to make those grooves more pronounced and it's going to make that pumpkin look a little bit more realistic instead of a plastic craft pumpkin. Then I also needed to cover that lip because the white from the foam being cut was just not, I wasn't feeling it. So we are going to cover that with just some chalk paint. This is the color pumpkin. Now for our ears, we're going to need two Dollar Tree ladles, whichever ones you can find. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to pop through this with my miter shears. Oh, ho, ho, was I wrong? I went to town, tried to cut it, and it was just not, just not budging. So I took it outside, tried to just start with my little handsaw to be like, okay, am I going to come out here and have to cut this? That didn't work. And then I thought, I have this PVC pipe cutter, maybe this will work, and ta-da! That was it. You can get these for like 10 bucks. So if you cut a lot of plastic, this thing I think is going to come up to my craft room so I can chop some more stuff. Then I knew I wanted to spray paint them to give them a base coat because I was going to paint them with chalk paint and I didn't think that would stick as well to the plastic. So once they were primed, I started with the pumpkin color just to cover it. And when they dried, they were way too bright. They did not go with the pumpkin. So then I tried to darken them up with some antique wax and it was just not mixing. So then I decided to go through and make a different color, try to color match the pumpkin, and that worked much better, so I ended up painting those that color. To attach my ears to my pumpkin, I made some slots on either side so that I would be able to slide in the little handle piece. I had a lot of you suggest this last year that I should just have left a little bit more on it for the ears to just pop in, and that was a great idea. So once I was able to get the size that I wanted, then I could pop the ears in and it was perfect. I reinforced the ears with just a little bit of hot glue just to make sure it would kind of sit where I wanted them to. And then my last step was to add the face. Now you could do this a few different ways. You could do what I did last year and cut out the face and have it be a traditional like lantern. You could also grab the template from my free file library over on my blog. Details will be down in the description. You could trace it on and then paint on the Mickey face. Or you could do what I did and use the SVG also in my free file library to cut out the face and just some black vinyl and just apply the stickers that way. I ended up doing it by hand just because I didn't want the transfer tape to do anything wonky to my pumpkin. And I ended up being able to get it centered just fine. Oh my gosh, how cute is this guy? And I am so happy about this. This is another one that Finn loved when I brought down to get some footage. And honestly, like I'm a huge Halloween candy person. So I'm glad that our store had some Halloween candy out. I can fill this. I'll be munching on this now through Halloween. And you know, baby likes chocolate. So I gotta give the baby what the baby wants, right? What I want you to do is let me know down in the description, what is your favorite Halloween candy? Like what is your must have Halloween candy? What brings you back all the nostalgia? Let me know, I'd love to hear. Quick reminder, theirs was almost 80 bucks. Mine, 20, 75% off. I think he is so cute. Can't wait to display him for this Halloween. Here's another idea for those craft pumpkins for my people that maybe don't like Disney or you might like both of these. I am going to use another one of those small craft pumpkins for $11.99 from Joann's and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with Mickey. So we're going to cut off the top. We are going to use the antique wax to make the ridges look more realistic and we're going to paint the inside ridge orange so the white doesn't stick out. Then you have a beautiful vessel to create a floral arrangement. This is not only great to decorate your own house, but this would also be a wonderful hostess gift just to take to someone, or this would be a great thing to take for Thanksgiving. So many different options. I grabbed a variety of both florals from my house as well as a couple new things from Joanne. And I like to grab seasonal florals when they go on clearance at the end of the year because most of the colors are gonna stay the same and it just really makes everything so much cheaper because florals can get out of hand. I'm just using my miter shears from Amazon to chop up these pieces so I'm not sticking the whole branch in there. 
and I'm using a mixture of colors. Like I've got this Dollar Tree eucalyptus stem. The darker ones are from Joanne and I'm just adding them into the center to kind of start with darker leaves and I need a quick my change of there. Now we need a quick change of camera angle so you can see the rest of this. I found these in my basement, actually. I think I was going to return them and then I didn't end up doing that. So it was always nice to find more supplies in the basement. I'm adding some of these berries, some more leaves, and this pumpkin pick to finish off the look. You could customize this any way you want. You could do a white pumpkin base. You could do different colors within the display. I made a bunch of these for centerpieces at a friend's baby shower when she had a kind of fall themed baby shower. So tons of different options. They were selling an arrangement like this at Kirkland's for 40 bucks. That's the most comparable. Mine was about 20, so 50% off. When I saw that Pottery Barn had lit wreaths for fall, I was so excited. I knew I had to make one because all my lit ones are for Christmas and it starts getting dark around Halloween time. So I would love to have this out. Starting with a $6 grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby. And then here's where you can really get creative. Think about the colors in your house. What florals would go with that? I really liked the white vibes, but I wanted a little bit more tan and orange in there. So I also grabbed that. The first thing I needed to do was light up that wreath. So I have these at my house from Christmas from Walmart. You can usually find lights like this really inexpensively from now until Christmas. And oh, just, just a little knot there. I had to unravel that. But once I did, I was able to wrap it all the way around. And I used the lights to wrap the battery pack in the back so it would stay with my wreath. Now we're just going to layer up our faux florals and that is what's going to give us the really luxurious high-end look without having to spend a ton. So I'm going to start with these Dollar Tree picks. So this is $2.50 in florals, which is really inexpensive. And I'm going to just push the bottom of the pick into this grapevine wreath. I'm not going to use any adhesive here. I don't need any twine. We're just going to shove it into the grapevine wreath and it's going to stay. And then that way you can take the items off if you want to repurpose the wreath. You can do other things with the florals, then, you know, it won't have glue residue. This is what I like to do. I'm doing a few different types of leaves before we get into the pumpkin picks. And then I'm going to do the orange and the white kind of alternating. I like that these also have some texture with the berries around the outside. And again, you're just shoving those in, adding a little bit more filler. Leaves and berries like this are great to fill any open space. And once you're done tinkering with it, it is all good to go. Now, I love how this looks during the day, but it's also so pretty at night. I like that it glows up our porch area. And this would also be a nice one to put in your house, like on a blanket ladder, maybe near where you're watching TV at night, because it will glow up that area, kind of like Christmas lights. I don't know about you, but that vibe just makes me so happy. So that is definitely something that is a win for me. So it's not a direct dupe, but theirs was $149. I made mine for about 26. That's 83% off. Each year for the last couple years, Pottery Barn has come out with these terracotta pumpkins. They started with the orangey color. Then last year they launched these black ones and I love how they look and they're really easy to dupe. So let's go back into the whiskey archives and let me show you how easy they are to make. So I went to Michael's and grabbed this large pumpkin. It's originally $29.99, but I got it 30% off and I had a little voucher coupon because I spend a lot of money on craft supplies at Michael's apparently. I grabbed a small one from Michael's and I also grabbed this $10 one from Marshall's. Now what I really like about these is that they don't have like the scary spooky face because at our house we do fun spooky. But we're going to mix some baking soda for this first layer with some just black acrylic paint. This is regular old baking soda and I added a decent amount because you want this to be thick. That is going to give you the texture of stone pottery versus this glazed ceramic. Same thing with this other one. We're going to cover them fully and you also want to make sure you get in the eyes, nose, mouth, make sure all of those areas are covered completely. Here's what it looks like. You're going to have chunks in your paint and that is what you want because you want it to look nice and rustic and aged and all that fun stuff. So here's what it looks like when I let them completely dry. 
And then I decided to add a little bit of orange paint to the inside of this one. Now, I probably should have done this before I painted the outside black. That would have made life a lot easier, but you know, hindsight's 2020. But I just stuck my paintbrush up through the bottom where you could add a light and painted the inside orange to match the inspo. I also added a little bit of sand and flour on a little bit of wet paint at the top just to give it a little extra oomph. And you probably could do without the flour, but I just used a little bit of sand from Finn's Sandbox and it added just a little more grit to the top. I love this look. It definitely screams quintessential Pottery Barn to me without the Pottery Barn price, which is all what we're going for here. Like everybody works hard for their money. We want to have nicely decorated homes, but we don't want to blow our money on, you know, crazy spent stuff. I guess I'm saying a collective we, that's how I feel. Let me know down below if you agree and feel the same way, but I love saving, but getting that look as well. So their large one was $89. So just for one pumpkin, mine 21. So 75% off. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know your favorite dupe down in the comments. And also, if you've got some other things that you are eyeing wanting to make for fall this year, leave them in the comments. I love suggestions from you guys, and that helps me form future content. So comment away. I read them all, and we will put that in somewhere in the future where I can make it fit and work. Also, a huge thank you to Quince for sponsoring this video and helping me bring you all of these DIY dupes. Head over to quince.com slash whiskey wit to get free shipping on your order, as well as 365 day returns. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you can join the Whiskey Craft Buddies and I will catch you in the next one.